Thursday, August 11th. I've been watching Karuna here, and it has really been having some very wild uh, deviations this morning. Um, I didn't actually get to record the really big jump, but here it goes again. <clears throat> and as you can see, this is real time. This is where it has deviated, and here's what we saw literally just a couple of minutes ago. Um, strong deviation. There it goes again. Look at that, folks. And we can see that represented all across. So our magnetic field is definitely taking a hit. Look at there. You see, look at that. That's what I am talking about. Uh, it has been doing this this morning very regularly. Now, some may say, well, all right, maybe an anomaly. Um, yeah, it may be an anomaly. It's a one that's definitely um, having an impact on our magnetosphere. That's for sure. So you, you have this, hopefully, in your um, bookmarks. Uh, continue to check it out. Uh, we are definitely uh, experiencing some turbulence. So I found this really great app. Um, it's actually from a company over in uh, Britain. I'll leave the link below. But this is really a very um, cool application they've done here. As you can see, I've put in where uh, I live at. And... This goes by uh, hour by hour. You can start at midnight. You can start at the current hour. You'll do it right here. You can center on midday. Um, just about any way you really want to go about this. It's a very versatile tool and just very cool. So it's right now about 9.30 my time as it's showing right here. And... So there are no clouds, <laughs> uh, none at low, medium, or high. But I thought this was very uh, useful because many people don't realize that, you know, clouds are at different levels. Also, is this just not, I thought, just really cool. It also shows you when the International Space Station goes over, gives you the visibility. Um, you know, ours is over 10 miles, which is normal, except when we have the forced uh, fires and the smoke, what have you. Um, and right on cue, uh, late day uh, thunder showers, monsoon. It's just a very cool, now you will have to convert from Celsius over to Fahrenheit, but that's pretty easy to do. Uh, right here, when you start getting about the 29s and 30s, you're 90 degrees thereabout. And look at this, it actually gives you the barometric pressure and the ozone. And I just thought that this was just like the coolest thing. So how you read this, green, it's like a traffic light. Green is good. You get into the oranges, uh, that's caution. And then you get into the reds, um, it becomes a uh, warning. So look into this. It's a great little tool and something that you might find useful. Here's another great uh, website. Maybe some of you are familiar with this uh, Weather Underground. Um, just another great site. Um, one that you can, as well as the last one, you can get the moon phases. You can actually get where um, the sun is and its inclination. It's just a great, great website. Again, um, one that if you want to use, uh, you know, you can become your own weatherman. <laughs> You really can. And so it gives us a, a real view of just some of the things that we have going for us. By the way, one of the things I forgot to show you on the first uh, website, and this is really, I just thought, so cool. It, it gives you actually where you can begin to see um, the annual darkness. Uh, obviously, we have past 
the summer solstice and now our days are being reduced here by on an average of two minutes a day once we start getting into the latter part of August uh, that will then begin to accelerate um, in some cases nearly four minutes a day so again great tools so I've actually been pretty tied up um, with other business and haven't had the opportunity to really come in here and look at our jet stream. And as many of you recall, we, we have watched this low pressure system just absolutely grow and build. And as you can see now, it has clearly divided itself throwing up the normal jet stream up and over this. And if we look at it from the equator view, we can see this as well, um, that it becomes, look at this, just a massive, massive, um, I don't know if that's a storm in the upper ionosphere, but it's definitely a low pressure system. And look at the way that that jet stream is hauling. That's about... I don't know, 230, 235 miles an hour. And if we look in the center of our storm here, let's try to get right there. <laughs> Why, well, I, I would dare say that that wouldn't even probably blow out a candle on a birthday cake. Uh, three kilometers, I mean, just a dramatic difference. And if you've noticed something else, uh, the northern uh, jet stream is starting to pick up in intensity, which, why don't we go down here, the 250 millibar level and see, whoa, okay, I think all of this can begin to see, I had one uh, subscriber, she said, well, looks like the southern jet stream is now uh, approaching the equator, and you know what, I think she's right, it is, um, Look at this. Let's just blow this up. This, you know, I have found one of the keys of life's enjoyment and longevity of life is to never stop being in awe of your surroundings. People who begin to take that and never see it again, although they walk through it and live in it, they're the ones who are dying. They're asleep and they don't see things. Now, when I see this, hey, it may be absolutely normal. I don't care. To me, I find this fascinating. And regardless of what others may think of other individuals, and in particular, I'm thinking of Dr. Beckwith. Um, listen, the man has studied. He's got his degrees. That's more than you and I have. And most of these critics I hear uh, are not even qualified to open their mouth, much less make a, a statement. So let's just take a look at this. I don't know. Does this look to you to be collapsing right down here into the southern jet stream from the northern? Are, are we misinterpreting this? I don't think so, folks. In fact, we have it not only going here, but we have it going down here. And then look at here on the United States, again, intermixing. You know, once again, I really don't care what people think. I find this interesting. And here's the fact, folks. As some of you have already made comments, it seems as though the seasons are, well, let's just say ending sooner are starting quicker. Uh, we're finding mornings here, um, although the days are warm, but we live in a semi-arid climate, uh, but the seasons are changing. We're seeing it up in the higher elevations. The aspens are beginning to change. Now, when the aspen trees here in Colorado begin to change, uh, and of course you're looking at, you know, nine, 10,000 feet up there, but that's an indicator. So are we gonna be seeing something more? I don't know, folks. I do know this. This doesn't seem, now we've watched this for the last nearly two months. But 
I think there's clearly something going on here. So we might as well take a look at the ocean temps. See whether we have, what are they saying this year? Um, an El Nino or La Nina? I'm not really sure um, how that goes. Um, I think the El Nino is warmer. But we're seeing right here at the equator that the water is definitely cooler. So maybe this is a La Nina year. Who knows? But again, um, all of this is impacting us. All of this. Now, you may have already heard about this if you follow Ben Davidson over at Suspicious Observers. I do. I remember. Um, and other um, good websites out there. Folks, we need to be, you need to be aware of this. Let me just say this. Um, I followed the sun half for years, and this is a pretty active region, I have to say. Uh, if we get the magnetism and the polarity to start mixing, this could prove to be very interesting. And here is the uh, magnetism. So Suspicious Observers really has the best website on this. Uh, if any of you are lacking in understanding when they talk about beta, delta, gamma, uh, it's all indicated by these magnetic areas, positive, negative. And I'm not about to go through that. There are far better of the sources. Go to uh, spaceweather.com or Suspicious Observers. Um, you'll get a good lesson. But folks, we do need to be aware of this. Again, uh, we have had very little um, sunspot activity this year. And one of the things I have learned that if these two get in a polarity where they uh, start mixing, that can actually send off a uh, C-class flare. SDO is back up and running. Um, whatever took it offline, they have now got it up. So we're all glad to hear about that. Real-time solar winds. Phi angle is definitely up. And again, this is great tools, guys and ladies. Real-time solar wind telemetry. I don't know how it gets any better than that. And the last one I will do, uh, again, I'll leave this for you as well, is to see how we're doing on the national drought. And again, you know, there's been a lot of debate as to what continues to happen here on the West Coast. Is it a normal or is it abnormal? Is someone messing with it or is this just a cycle? Don't know. All right, folks, uh, keep yourself uh, safe and we'll talk real soon.